Welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be having a look at a laptop that's been involved with a scam. So what happened was our customer responded to a phone call from um, BT saying that there was a problem with the internet connection. And unfortunately she had had a problem with the internet where there was an outage uh, a few days before. Um, so she responded to the phone call and ended up giving them access to the her laptop. Um, so we don't know what's on the laptop. All we did, all we said at the time was just to shut the lid on the laptop, leave it switched off and we'll come and get it. So not sure what we're going to find, but um, hopefully it won't be too serious because what we don't want to have to do is reformat and obviously reinstall Windows on there. But if we have to, then we will. So let's go ahead and find out what's going on. Okay, the first thing that we want to do is uh, we're going to start the machine up, but we want to make sure that the Wi-Fi gets switched off as soon as we can. So let's power it on. And we're going to hit the Wi-Fi button. Okay. So as you can see down here, there we go, so you can see down here that our Wi-Fi is now disabled. So this was a BT scam basically, so we're going to sign in. We're going to make sure that the Wi-Fi is still switched off. Which it is, so we're disconnected. And then we're going to go through the machine itself and have a look to see what they've done. Okay, so let's have a look to see if they've installed any remote control software. I'm fairly sure they have because um, we had notification that um, um, our user had given them access and they've used AnyDesk to connect to it. So we're gonna select that device there, select that software, and we're gonna uninstall this. So yes. Okay, and we're going to remove the configuration files. Okay, the shell association for any desk, that's fine. Okay, so now we're just going to scroll down carefully and see what else has been installed, if anything. Lock my PC free edition. That's another one they've installed, so let's remove that. continue the uninstall you must enter the lock my PC administrator password okay so it looks like we can't remove this at the moment so we'll have to uh, come back to that <clears throat> okay, so I presume that when we go online, they switch that to lock. Okay, so let's see <clears throat> if we can remove it from the registry. So we're going to go into regedit, the runner's administrator. And we're going to do a search for, what is it called, lock my PC. if you can find anything okay fs pro labs lock my pc right so let's see if we can find first start
Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is the problem that we've got. Right, so let's now see if we can get around this and do a sign out. Okay. Okay, so you sign out and sign back in again, we're okay. So now we could, what we can probably do is, uh, let's try, so we need to get it to lock again, which we'll do in a sec. Okay, there we go. So. Let's now try and see if we can get this unlocked. Seems to have locked everything. Not sure how we're going to enter the key. Okay, so let's just do Control Alt Delete. We're going to sign out again. Sign out anyway. So the way that they've done it is they're preventing us from entering the entering the password so to be able to unlock it so it forces a forces a lock basically so what we're going to do is we're going to see if this works okay so this is the um, password recovery that FS Pro Labs have made available because they know that their software has been used for uh, scammers basically what they do is they install the software configure it and it locks your PC and you can't uninstall it without the password and you can't unlock it because they don't give you the option to enter a code to actually unlock your computer the only way to do it is you you have to go in and uninstall the software but because they put a password on there you can't uninstall it so what you want to do is come to this page um, just type in um, lock my pc password recovery into google and you'll find a link and it will take you here and if you scroll down you can see here that um, as part of the they're showing the lock screen recovery here but in actual fact um, in our instance you don't actually get this so the only way to do it is to sign out sign back in again go into uninstall the software and at this point you can basically enter the following code 9999011111 and then it will give you a code. Don't hit OK, don't hit cancel, but take that code, come to this page, enter the code here. As you can see, I've just put a dummy one in, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tick the box that says, I certify that I'm an owner or authorized user of the locked computer, and then click on submit. The system will then give you a code, and at that point, you can go in and use that code as the password to uninstall the software. And this should give us the ability to enter the special code. Let's see if it works. So we're going to do. OK, there we go. So we've got our code. So now we can enter the, that recovery code on the recovery page. OK, so we now should be, enter, be able to enter the passcode of 825. Three one three. There we go. <laughs> so the scammers um, didn't really enable us to be locked out completely. Um, so 
So we're going to leave it there. I'm not going to uh, do anything against the website. I'm not going to enable the Wi-Fi yet. Okay, so now we need to restart the laptop. And if you notice, we've still got our Wi-Fi completely disabled, so we're still off the internet. And then we want to go back in and make sure that uh, it has in fact been removed. Called Lock My PC. Okay, so it has been removed, but now what I want to do is I want to pop back into the registry. Do a search for it again. Okay, so it's still in the registry. So what we're going to do is we're going to select FS Pro Labs. We're going to get this one first of all. We're going to delete this E and all its sub keys, and then we're going to delete that as well. There we go. And we're going to hit F3 to continue searching. OK, and let's have a look. Windows Start Menu Programs. OK, so that can be removed. And we're going to also remove there. And do another search. And in here, we've got lock my PC4, so we're going to remove that, remove that, and we're going to do a search again. We're going to keep searching until it comes up with zero. Okay, so while that is um, finding it's the registry entries, we're also going to remove Google Chrome because we know that our customer does not have Google Chrome installed. I'm going to select it and I'm going to uninstall it. As you can see here, this was installed yesterday. So we're going to remove Google Chrome completely as well. And also delete our browsing data. Here we go. So I'm going to delete this as well. I'm going to do a final search nearly at the end of the registry. OK, there we go. So that's now cleaned ish. We're also going to just have a look in the recycle bin. Any desk Christmas card? OK, that's fine. So we can empty the recycle bin. And while we're still offline, the next thing we want to do is to do a full virus scan using Malwarebytes. Why use Malwarebytes? Well, in our opinion, it finds lots of potentially unwanted software. So we're going to run this and see if it comes back with anything. That's fine. Because uh, we know that we're offline. So... Uh, Total items in quarantine. Let's see when these went in. Okay, these are old. Fine, so we can ignore them for now, actually. And we're going to go into our scanner. And we're going to go into advanced scanners. We're going to do custom scan. We're going to select our C drive only, because the D drive is a, is a DVD ROM. And we're going to select scan. And once that's finished scanning, Yep, we know about that. We're happy that it's up to date because it was connected to the internet uh, yesterday. So we're going to run this through and then once this is finished, we'll see if it finds anything. Right, so after the uh, malware scan has completed, we've got one item here, which is, uh, I've seen this many times. This is um, on a cap file to do with the sound 
um, and I've seen it on a lot of systems so I don't know whether it's a false positive but it's certainly detected with malware bytes and it's also detected with Bitdefender so we're going to quarantine this okay so we're going to say restart we should be safe to go back onto the internet so we're going to enable our Wi-Fi button so we're going to re-enable the Wi-Fi and as you can see it's put it into airplane mode so we're going to switch off airplane mode okay so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the email and update the password in this because we before we brought this home uh, or before we brought this back here then um, what we did was to uh, at our customer site we changed her email password and we also checked that no forwarding had been set up on her email account and we also enabled two-factor authentication to stop uh, anybody from changing her password and locking her out so she's not going to be able to get back in so that's what we've done already on the email side so we're going to go in and change the password on outlook and then once that's done uh, let's just double check um, what we're going to do is we're going to return the laptop to our customer and we're going to go through all of the main websites that she uses and we're going to change all the passwords on there as well so if you've been scammed and you're given access to your machine and you don't know what they've done then change your email password and change all the passwords on the main websites that you use uh, also you should report um, the breach to um, potentially the police if it's serious enough but certainly to your bank um, so that they can keep an extra uh, eye on your account to make sure there's no financial issues going on there so <laughs> i can't stress enough how important is that uh, people learn that their internet provider will never contact them the banks will never contact them in fact no company will ever contact you unsolicited and want to get access to your machine or for you to visit your bank online while they uh, are sat on your computer so if you ever get a phone call from your internet service provider or from microsoft then literally just put the phone down. That's all you need to do to protect yourselves from falling for one of these scams. So if you found the video useful, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.